<laughs> ding dong. <laughs> ding dong. <laughs> ring a ding ding. You know, I couldn't think the other day of what table tennis was called, and I'm like, ping pong? <sighs> ping pong? Is it ping pong? Table tennis? Ping pong. Ping pong? Ping pong. <laughs> it just sounds it's, so terrible. But it's what the game sounds like. Ping pong. Ping pong. Ooh, you touch my tra la la. My ping uh, ping pong. My ping ping pong. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Press Continue podcast. I'm your host Adam and my co-host Brittany. Hello. And this week we are going to be... Who are you waving at? (laughs) No one. (laughs) And this week we are covering Card Wars from the Adventure Time cartoon series. So, Card Wars, well, just Adventure Time in general. I know we're both huge fans of Adventure Time. Adventure Time? No kidding. It's probably one of my favorite shows on television. Yeah. It's like our soap opera. Yeah, it is like a really good soap opera. Yeah. It's, it's I, a... don't, I don't even like you comparing it to a soap opera. <laughs> no, because this is beyond awesome. Yeah. Soap operas are terrible. Oh my gosh, all the background noise. Want to go in the closet? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it in the closet, <laughs> or we'd be we'd be trapped in the closet. Like R. Kelly. Yeah, I don't have. I don't think there's a midget living here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you check the closet? I I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like someone's sawing in the background. So, um, Adventure Time is awesome. It's a great yeah. cartoon, and I'm tired of people telling me that cartoons are for kids. No. Who made the rules? Uh. I like watching animation. Right. Um, how, okay, how many people out there watch Family Guy? Millions. How many people out there have watched Simpsons through the 27... 27- exactly. Adventure Time is uh, beyond a children's show. The story is, is pretty in-depth. Well, kids like it. Adults like it. Yeah. It, it hits you on whatever age you're at. Every time I rewatch an episode two, I find something else because at first I watch it and I'm like, "Yay, I'm There's a little kid!" There's so much to to find in that show. Well, like what? Well, <laughs> <laughs> they leave you little clues, and I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. But the history of the planet they're on, what right. happened to it, how everyone came to be where they are. We still don't know what's going on because you you see like the underground cities of old New York and. Yeah. The the different layers of what's buried underneath everything, and the whole story with Marceline and Ice King. There's 1980s technology everywhere, there's bombs, it's, it's just a really it's good show. just a weird mix. So in uh, 2012, they came out with an episode called Card Wars. God, was that long ago? Yeah. It took them two years to come out with this game, off that amazing episode? Uh, game development, it takes a little while. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, but Finn and Jake play a card game mm-hmm. where they have to determine who's the cool guy and who's the dweeb. Right. And uh, whoever loses is a dweeb gets to drink a cup of Mountain Dew with kimchi and ham juice, <laughs> ham chunk juice, and uh, forget what else he put in there. But it was it was uh, a lot of disgusting, disgusting things. Yeah. yeah. Coffee grounds, beetle butter, grape jelly, kimchi, and. This stuff. Hey! You're ruining that pop with weird taste! Yeah, the second I saw... What is happening out there? (laughs) Look, the apocalypse! (laughs) Someone got hit in the boing line. (laughs) Someone hit them. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I've always played trading card games growing up. You know, I played Magic, I played um, more Magic... Yes, and then I played um, um, some magic. Some magic. Then I invented a trading card game that yes. I never finished. Then you played more magic. Then I played more magic because I couldn't get my game going. So yeah, you like magic card game, kind of like that. Uh, yeah, and so the second I saw the Card Wars episode start, 
it uh, instantly piqued my interest. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. All I knew is that after, as I was watching it, I was like, I want to play that game. I want to play it. It looks yeah, fun. Yeah, I remember you went and printed some <laughs> cards <laughs> off the internet that were just someone had made. It wasn't even a game yet. You'd be surprised how many versions of, like, fan-made versions of Card Wars that I found on the internet and that people were getting all excited about making their own version, and there were some good ones out there. I mean, the one we played, it was it was super cl- complicated, but um, it was it was still interesting. It was fun, kinda. Yeah, we were all looking for the uh, holographic board that made all the cards <laughs> come to life and attack each other. Yeah, and that's kind of what they've done with the iPad version of it. I haven't played that yet. I, I haven't either, but I've watched videos about it. I just don't feel like paying paying for anything. <laughs> Yeah, me either. Yeah. So, Card Wars is a lane-based card game where you choose a land type, and right now they have four of the characters each having a land type. Right. You which have... Jake has the cornfields. Cornfields are awesome! <laughs> Finn has the blue plains. Right. Lady Rainicorn is Sandylands, and Bimo's in the Useless Swamp. Right. Which, uh, I mean, Jake and Finn make sense. But I don't understand why Lady Rainicorn is surrounded by death and sand when rainbows come out after it rains. I don't know. And BMO. And BMO, what are you doing? What, why is your computer in a big moist environment? <laughs> that that doesn't make it any doesn't sense. It doesn't have to either. make sense. And, and BMO is so like happy go lucky, and he's surrounded by swampiness. And BMO's agender, okay? He's I what? Mean, asexual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's not a gender. Well, he's a computer. He's a computer. Yeah. Yeah. You keep saying him. But he's a game boy. Yeah. That's sexist. <laughs> it is? <laughs> yeah, why isn't there a game girl? Uh, I thought that's what you are. Why isn't there a little computer called a game girl? You want me to paint you a pink one? No! That's sexist too! <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, you said about the the four different decks there are. The Jake, the Finn, the BMO. So Mm. the land type you choose determines what creatures you can play. Okay. Right. Right. You get a set that matches your landscape, and you can play the creatures that match that landscape. Right. And pretty much the pre-made decks, like, for example, Jake's cornfields, all his creatures are corn creatures. Mm -hmm. So they made the pre-built decks... At least basic, some of the basics were simple to start. Yeah, um, Jake's deck seems to be one that you can just start off really quickly and be able to play well with it. It's the easiest to learn. Yeah. And that's that's kind of what, what I thought, too. It's like the beginner. If somebody's never played a card game before or a trading card game before, give them the cornfields. Give them Jake. It's, it's the easiest to learn the basic mechanics of the game. If you're going to start playing this... Buy the Finn and Jake pack first. Yeah, because the, the BMO uh, deck, it takes a while to get it working for you. Mm-hmm. It's mostly about what you have in your uh, discard pile. Right. And it takes a while for you to, you know, pile up your discard enough to make your cards work for you. Right. So. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot more to think about. There's a lot mm-hmm. more to learn. It's a, it's a lot more complicated if you start with uh, the BMO and Rain and Corn pack. Versus the Finn and Jake pack, which is a really good introduction to how the game works. Yeah, because so complicated. Yeah, the Finn deck has a little more finesse to it, where again Jake is pretty much here's your creatures, here's like straight direct damage, here's everything gets powered up by how many cornfields you have. Where Finn does a little more dealing with power ups and characters switching lanes to get power ups and moving cards around. It's a little more involved. Yeah, and the more you play, even with the uh, easier decks, um, more strategy you can you can add in. Right. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, like any of these games. There's more strategic cards or moves that you can make as you learn right. how to play the game. It's it's like you'll be sitting there staring at your cards the first time you play, and you're like, what does all, what does each one of these do? And you're trying to just figure out how things work. And what the cards do. And the more familiar you get with the individual cards, you start figuring out combos. And this works with that. So if I play both of these at the same time, 
this will power up this, and I can beat you down yeah, faster. Yeah, when you start, your round could take, like, you know, 30 seconds or a minute, but as you get more advanced in playing the cards, it could take several minutes for each round, because you just keep playing different cards and moving. Right. And <laughs> moving, right. Right. <laughs> moving forward. Yeah. But at the same time, the more you play it, the more nobody has to read cards anymore. Yeah, you know what your guy does. You know you don't want him to have that card, and he keeps getting it over and over and over again. <laughs> aggravate you. I, I did that to her yesterday, where we were playing, and I had a, uh, what was his name? The Ancient Scholar, and what he does is he, uh, he floops, and he'll pull a random card out of my graveyard back into my hand. So, oh yeah, I was like, yeah. So I kept using the ability from Ancient Scholar, and you had four to choose from, and you kept picking the one <laughs> that I wanted, which was the power up, so I could beat you down. Yeah, that was aggravating. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. But you said floop. What is flooping? Flooping is how you activate abilities on your creature cards that have the floop ability. Um, I know it from magic turns, which is terms, which is tapping mm-hmm. a creature. It but, would just apply on that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't copy them, so you gotta make up your own name for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's a way to activate the, uh, ability of your creature card. I flooped the pig. <laughs> Everybody wants to floop the pig. Yeah. That's why we play the game. Right. Okay, so the creature cards deal damage to the opposing creature in the la- in their lane. Right. Or if there's no creature in the opposing lane, the damage is dealt to the opponent. Right. Which is what you're trying to accomplish in the first place is to kill the other player, not yeah. the other creatures. They have 25 hit points, right? Right. And you just add up. Take your damage. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought it was weird that you always said that the old the older player goes first. Yeah, and and it's kind of a cruddy start to the game because you can't attack. You're setting up all your guys, and you can't do anything with them. So it leaves the other person open to attack you, especially that first round of cards. Right, but if the player that went first always got to attack first, no matter what, well, whoever goes no first, cards. yeah, the other person's going to take damage on the very first turn of the game. So I think it balances that out where it's not... First turn, I drop four creatures and take ten damage. Now half the game's already over. Yeah. So, that's... I think that is kind of fair, but kind of cruddy at the same time. Yeah. It makes sense from a gaming mechanic. Yeah, but then the next player just, like, whips... Like, wipes out everything you just laid down. And you gotta replace them. Right. So I thought they did a good job recreating what we saw in in the cartoon... Yeah, I like that this card game is, like, inside of the Adventure Time world. Right. But, because there's no, there's no characters in it. There's no Finn or Jake or Marceline in the card game. But you get characters that remind you of people that you would see in the Adventure Time world, or in the Land of Ooh. I didn't even notice that. Grilling that... Man? Sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> Angel? Sand Angel? Uh, yeah, that... Wandering Bald Man? He was in the, in the show, but right. he was part of the card wars. Right. Game. Yeah, there's they they did bring a lot of the cards that you saw in the episode. Yeah. Cool dog, punk cat. Right. Um the pig. <laughs> the pig, yes. All the husker knights. <laughs> all the, hus- the But you you could see that character in the show. Like oh, as yeah. a char- as a character that that does more than just be in the card wars game. Yeah, I mean it, the the art on the cards just everything in the game matches the adventure time world set. Yeah. So yeah. It was fun. I did notice something, though, is that all the decks, except for Rainicorns, had cards from the show. Rainicorn was... Rainicorn's deck is completely original. There's nothing from what you saw on that on that episode of the cartoon. That's interesting. I didn't notice that. But there are cards called Rainbow Cards that are played on all four decks. You don't have to be on any specific land type to play those cards. Right. So maybe Which... that's why... Rainbow, Rainicorn. So she's in every she's deck. Te- yeah, she's in every deck. She's teleporting across all of them. But she wasn't in the show. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What does that got to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tina Turner. <laughs> no, what was that from? 
Ghostbusters? I don't know. What is he do it? Do it again? What does that got to do with it? Well, if you know what that's from, <laughs> please comment on the show because we have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, obviously. <clears throat> so when we were playing the decks against each other, again the sets you have the Finn and Jake set. The decks are built to play against each other straight out of the box. Yes. They really complement each other right out of the box. There's cards that target each individual. For example, again, flooping the pig flips a cornfield, so your creatures that gain power from cornfields, it weakens them all. So they do a lot of things like that in, in that Finn and Jake set. They also do that again with the BMO and Lady Rainicorn set, where again, cards directly affect the counter deck to it. What I thought was interesting was when we mixed it up. We did like BMO versus Jake and Finn versus Lady Rainicorn. Mm -hmm. That's when you saw really what cards for one were useless overall. For example, I had uh, we were playing and I had two pigs in my hand, which are weak creatures. You weren't playing anything with cornfields, so there was no point in me playing the pig. Yeah, you couldn't use them. Yeah, the pig was dumb. <laughs> the pig was dumb. <laughs> Stupid pig. But when we were playing like that, it made me realize that you can really do some cool stuff when you start making your own custom decks. Mm -hmm. um, I saw some neat combinations that I wouldn't have saw if we wouldn't have crossed the two sets apart from each other, which you can either play the game with the pre-built decks all the time, or they encourage you to start making your own decks and building your own custom decks, which is also, I saw that they came out with booster packs now. Yeah, and that was a big controversy um, about the game, because when it was announced in 2013, they claimed it would be an LCG or living uh, card game model where um, any expansions would include the same fixed cards, eliminating the random collectible mm -hmm. part of the card games. And then uh, a month after the release of the game, they announced an expansion pack called For the Glory, mm. featuring uh, 100 cards of common, uncommon, and rare varieties, basically doing the opposite of what they originally said they were doing. Yeah. So it, it, it upset a lot of fans and a lot of people that purchased the game because of that element. They didn't want to have to buy expansion packs to get cards. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into another one where I have to buy packs and packs and packs of cards to, to do whatever. And I like the pre-built decks ideas. I wish they'd come out with a, like, um, Lumpy Space Princess yeah, versus... Yeah, more character decks instead of piecing them together in uh, expansion sets. Right. It just, I mean, when I was in the comic book store the other day, it was $4 a pack, and you only get nine cards for 4 bucks. Yeah, it... it... It seems like they went back on what they originally said to make money. They saw how much it was selling out. Oh, yeah. And it was about money, not about what the fans wanted or what they were expecting already. Right. And the set, it's still impossible to find the stuff. I mean, you, you go on uh, Cryptozoic's website, and it's still on back order. What is it? Cryptozoic? Yeah, those guys. <laughs> um, well, you go on either one of those websites, <laughs> and it's on back order. I know I tried to order it the day that it came out, and it was on back order before it even came out. So I know you tried to get a set of it, too, and you it, couldn't find it anywhere. It took two months for it to ship, mm -hmm. at least. Which, they, they really need to get their, their stuff together as far as their website, too, because I kept checking to see when they were going to ship my order, and it said, on back order, on back order, on back order. Well, I got it at the house, and then I checked the website earlier that day, and it still said it was on back order and it hadn't shipped. <laughs> so, Lies. Even two weeks after I got the order, I still kept checking to see what it said, and it still said it was on back order. You're one of those people? Yeah, I, well, I was hoping to get two sets somehow. Because <laughs> then I could have gave you one, because you couldn't get it. Yeah. But what's funny is, I mean, when, again, when we were looking for it, you were in Chicago at the time. Yeah, I went to, I would guess every gaming store in the Chicagoland area, <laughs> and they did not have it. No. Did they even know what you were talking about? Some did, yeah. And yeah. some would say, I think our other location has it. And I was like, why don't you give them a call before <laughs> I drive over there? <laughs> yeah. So out here in North Carolina, uh, I went into a couple places, and they looked at me like I was an idiot. They're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I did run across several of those. They're like, we don't 
know what you're talking about. Right. Okay. It's like nobody knew anything that was going on. But now, what, I don't know how many months later this has been. It, it came oh, out in February. Okay. So a year later. Or oh. no. <laughs> Three months later. <laughs> He's not good at math. No, we, we've established that. <laughs> so three months later, I walk in there and I ask him about Adventure Time, and they know everything about the entire comic book series. There's a whole section of back issues for the comic book. They have the expansion packs right up there next to the register. I mean, they know everything and everything there is to know about Adventure Time, the comic books, the show, the card wars, everything. So... It went from not even being a blip on the map to to crazy, everybody wants it. Yeah. But you still can't get it. <laughs> unless you want these $4 packs <laughs> that nobody wants. Yeah, build the, build the deck. Yeah. But you can't use the expansion pack without the core set. What? Yeah, because you don't have the lands. <sighs> this, this is a mess, Cryptozoic. <laughs> a mess. <It's> terrible. <laughs> the game is fun, but come on. Yeah. Well, if you can, well, it's a lot of fun if you can ever get over the rule book. Yeah, that's another thing. It's very vague, even though it says that it's in-depth. I don't know why they say that it goes on and on when it doesn't. And each card, you're questioning how to play it. Right. The The rules definitely need some clarification, which I, I'll, I'll give... What's the name of the company again? Cryptozoic. Yeah. They are listening to the fans because online they have updated the manual. Okay. Um, one of the things the fans were asking for is when you do make your custom deck, you know, rip apart all the um, pre-made sets, you didn't you didn't have a deck list of what was in the original decks. So you couldn't remake them again. Oh, God. Well, they added to their <laughs> online manual the list of, of what, what was in the original each. decks. So at least they're listening and, and giving the fans what they want. But um, we want a manual that makes sense. Yeah, that looks that slapped together. They the first three games we played, all we did was argue. Well, we were trying to figure out what <laughs> the cards did, and we'll... just remember, in any trading card game, though, the cards always trump the rule book. Cards mm -hmm. cards will break the rules. Yeah, you trump the rule book. You, you quit your trumping. <laughs> <laughs> you try <trumping. laughs> Don't be trumping. <laughs> I don't know. I like the game. I want to play it more. Yeah, I was really getting into it after I played uh, a few more times, just uh, seeing what cards work together and and what strategies you could you could yeah. figure out. And I enjoy beating you. That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want you to play more too, so that uh, we can have some epic it, battles. It, it was just luck, okay? Uh huh. Uh huh. And blame it on, and next you're gonna blame it on the controller, even though it's not a video game. It then, was the controller. And then it's it's <laughs> lag. It was lag. <laughs> Cards wouldn't pick up easily. Oh my gosh. My fingers weren't sticky enough. <laughs> the cards kept slipping out of my hand. <laughs> uh, I did see today that on their website they announced that... What's the name of the company again? Cryptozoic. This I'm, is really lame. <laughs> I'm never going to get it right. Um, that they announced uh, card sleeves Ooh. with Finn and Jake on the back. Oh, well, that's kind of fancy. Yeah. So they better come out with BMO and Rain and Corn ones too. Yeah. That's exciting, because, yeah, it's kind of basic on the back. Right. It took me forever to realize that that was a C and a W. Yeah, it looks like E, U. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so that's something that, again, they have up on the website. But no price, no ETA of when it's coming out, and I'm sure when it does come out, it's going to be on back order. Yeah, there's a lie. They'll be like, you have to buy booster packs to get them. Oh. You're like, there's one in each. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never be able to cover all your cards. Never. <laughs> so I guess you're the cool guy. I gotta drink some kimchi and ham juice. Yeah, but you drink that anyway. I do not drink kimchi and ham juice. No, but you like kimchi. I enjoy kimchi, not in a cup. Ugh. <laughs> not in a cup, not with a duck. <laughs> Is that your new rap? Not with a chump. <laughs> or getting all crump. <laughs> <laughs> with the chump, we're getting all crump. Wow, that's little John's Dr. Seuss. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, get your decks if you can. <laughs> Order them up. Play it next month. <laughs> or you can come over and play ours. Yeah. You know, um, something again with the... We didn't talk much about the iPad version of it. 
Because I haven't even looked at it. Oh. But in the set, there was a secret clue on the pig card. Right. And it says, you get something for free. Yeah, if you buy the iPad version, you get a free card. <laughs> and you have to decode it with this red clear card. Which, that's another... Okay, so the iPad version of it, and uh, what I've seen with a lot of these video game trading card games, is they'll give you cards to start, and then you can buy, with real money, booster packs of virtual cards. I have a real problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if if you're going to give me, if I'm going to pay for like, you know, 20 30 $40 for a card game. It was really, it's really that much? Not on the iPad. I think it's like four ninety nine. But oh. some of the other ones, like like Magic the Gathering, where it's, mm-hmm. you know, 50 bucks to buy the game for like your PS3. And then they sell you $1.99 packs of cards. Electronic cards. Right. I, yeah. I have a real problem with electronic cards. If, if I'm going to... If I'm going to buy a game, give me everything that comes with it so it's a fair playing field. Uh, I could see, you know, playing the game and making it quick where you can get, like, gaming, game, in-game money to buy booster mm-hmm. packs and build up that way. By how much you play or whatever. But these people that, you know, get into the game, here's your five bucks for the iPad version, then I'm going to blow 50 bucks on virtual cards and just destroy everyone and make it no fun for everyone else. Yeah, it's just not fun at that it's, point. It's, it's terrible. That's the same thing when I started playing Hearthstone. I'm done with that game already, and it's only been a week. <laughs> because, Well, it started out real good. Because playing it, I mean, it's got interesting mechanics. It's it's very flashy on screen to play. But you start it out, it's free. You, you play a few games, you get a few booster packs. Then you get past their initial, like, I'd say their training period, which is playing about 20 matches. Mm-hmm. Then you start playing people that it starts opening up to people that have been playing the game a lot longer than you. And you start seeing all these crazy cards, all these rare cards that you've never seen before, and then they're just destroying you constantly. You don't even have a chance unless you do spend money on it and get these virtual cards. So it's been deleted. That yeah. game's gone. I'm done with it. I'm sorry to hear that. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying, though. It, it, it does take the skill and strategy out of it. Right, it's whoever's got the most money yeah. wins. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> We're three nice dudes having fun. We got warm bubble water on our buns. I love this spot, and that's a fact. But if I stay too long, I get a pruny back. <laughs> This week in gaming news... Best Buy is going to be holding in-store demos for the Wii U version of Super Smash Bros. They're going to be... It's, it's called Super Smash Bros. Smash Fest. It looks fun! Yeah, they, they're coming out with a HD version of Smash Bros. Adding a bunch of characters to it. Um, I know one of the new characters they've added was Mega Man, which I like the Mega Man series even though it's super hard. But they're going to be holding it on Wednesday, June 11th, and Saturday, June 14th. I'm going to put a link on our website, which is now presscontinuepodcast.com. You can pick your state. They'll tell you which Best Buy is holding the events. You go out there, try it for free before you buy it. The first 70 attendees are at each event to pre-order Super Smash Brothers, get a free rare collectible Super Smash Brothers coin. I also get $5 on my Best Buy certificate. Looks fun. Yeah, you get some some cool stuff with it too for showing up and pre-ordering it. You get um, to play Link, my favorite. <laughs> and uh, it looks like it's coming out for 3DS as well. So we got to show up and go do that. Sounds like a plan. Chop chop chop. <laughs> 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 Button mashing galore. My favorite move. Because I have no idea how to play Smash Brothers the right way, but I I, I I like all the characters in it. I like I like the idea of Smash Brothers. But I do get kind of bored with Smash Brothers pretty quick. Yeah, it's fun. I know the 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 boys like it. We have uh, the the nephews. They're six and eight, and they're always thrilled to play Smash Brothers yeah. on the Wii. Yeah, it's fun to watch them play and to play with them as well. Yeah, they make me laugh. But I can't take that game serious. I know there's some serious tournaments that go on with it, and people go. Yeah, it, it's not. It, it's not serious. Uh, why would you take anything seriously? What, what are you taking seriously? It's a. It, this game's like gets to you sport really level. getting into adventure time. <laughs> <laughs> really getting into Smash Brothers. 
But, um, I mean, it kind of like Street Fighter. Yeah. How the whole Street oh, Fighter yeah. series went, like, tournament level. Smash Brothers does that, too. And I've heard that at uh, E3 um, that they're going to have a big Smash Brothers tournament at the Nintendo booth. Wow. So it's a big deal. Baking pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Take some bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. Bacon pancakes, that's what it's going to make. Bacon pancakes. So next week's hints. It's one of my all-time favorite games. Well, in your face. Uh, you're going to get owned when I play that against you. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I can't wait. I can't wait. Any excuse to play that game. I know what part of Ghostbusters I was thinking of that scene. What was it? Are you, ma'am, menstruating right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> what does that got to do with it? Back off, man. I'm a scientist. I'm a scientist. Okay. That's the very beginning of the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I knew it wasn't Ghostbusters. I just didn't know where. Yeah, man. Blue music is the future. Listen. Shake your extremities. Shake your extremities. Off your arms and knees. I want them. Shake them, baby. Please, baby. Shake your ass for me. Shake your ass for me. Shake your ass for me. Shake your ass for free. Now make some bills, make the bills, make the mill. Crack me up with some yokes. I like girls who know the ropes. I like girls who can cope with the futuristic sound of balloon music. Pretty good. Follow us at our new website at PressContinuePodcast.com, where you will find our links to Facebook and Twitter. We also have the show notes that have links to things we've talked about in that show. And please subscribe and rate us on iTunes to help out the show. And we appreciate uh, any feedback you have for us. And that's it. I guess that's the end of the show this week. Yeah. We'll see you next time, where the gaming never ends, as long as you press press continue. continue.